Hi, welcome back to Bao Song Meet the Makers. I'm your host, Chell Wong, and today we have Caden, also known as Static Knives. Caden is known for his Icarus, uh, as well as the Artemis and other Rep Reblades and uh, the Ski Bones, which is a bare bones rehandle. Um, so thank you for coming on. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me on. It's a pleasure. And, you know, I'm excited to talk about some battle songs. Yeah, and it's too bad that we couldn't get your camera to work because I will need to edit in, like, pictures of the Artemis yeah. later, um, which I will ask you about. But first, I always like to ask, how did you get your name? I <laughs> Static Knives is not your the name that your parents gave you when you were born, I assume? <laughs> yeah. Either my parents are crazy hippies or who knows. Um, honestly. It's kind of a, it's, it's a weird story a little bit. Um, All right. Basically my uncle, one of my uncles, I have like six, I have a lot of uncles, Me too. Uh, but my, my eldest uncle, uh, when he was growing up probably around in his twenties, uh, he actually was a pro counter-strike player. Um, and wow. him and his team went, I think to the world championships. And this was at a time when like esports and stuff was not. Yeah, is this 1.6? Probably. I'm actually not entirely sure. Wait, uh, how he hasn't... old are you? <laughs> so I'm uh, 19. Oh my fucking god. Oh, <laughs> everyone's so fucking young. Oh, jeez. Yep, so I'm, I'm one of the young ones. <laughs> oh, fuck. Because I was like, oh, your uncle, for all I know, he's really old. And I'm like, oh no, he's probably not that much old. I mean, I'm 30, so he's probably older than me, but... Uh, yeah, I think he's he's in his 40s or 50s. Damn. So, uh, yeah. So back in the day, he he was a professional Counter Strike player, and in his username, gamer tag, whatever, um, was Static. And I'm not sure actually if that was the team he was on or if that was just his name, but it was like Static something. Gotcha. Um, and so growing up, me and my cousins and my uncles, every now and then, when we'd either get together and play a game or uh, you know, be making gamer tags or usernames. Sometimes our kind of like family, I don't know, uh, clan, so to speak. It wasn't oh, exactly that's actually that. really cute, though. But yeah, it was it was sweet. And so Static was when I was trying to come up with a name. Uh, actually, almost three years ago today, um, when I was trying to come up with a name, I kept going through all these different options, and I wasn't liking any of them. And I just decided, okay, you know what? I'll just be Static Knives. And maybe I'll change it later. Uh, who knows? And, you know, here we are. I didn't change it. And here we are. I've gotten used to it. So, and I'm happy with it. And uh, it's got a, it's got a fun story. So yeah, that's, does your that's how I got can, that. Does he smoke you all at like first person shooters? <laughs> so he actually, he's a software engineer and he worked for Microsoft for a long time. All right. So his skills are so like, they are not up to date. So me ah. and my cousins, we played with him a couple times, and he he does remember some stuff, but because his job was so demanding for so many years, he just had no time for it. So his his skills kind of uh, went away. <laughs> I was hoping he would just b hop all over the map and just completely <laughs> like s snipe you out of the air. Um, yeah. So I guess back to knives. You said three years ago around today. Uh, so have you been in the balsam making business for about three years then? Uh, yeah, so June 21st was the first, uh, on my Instagram profile, you can go look at the first post I ever made. And that was, um, that wasn't when I had the idea for the Icarus, but that was when I decided to start, uh, I guess, doing gotcha. reports, I guess, or update posts about it so I could kind of document the process. Um, and this was at a time where I wasn't sure if anybody else was doing angled handle ends or... Gotcha. Wing shaped bell song. So I wanted to make sure, hey, this is when I did it. If anybody did it sooner, good for them. But <laughs> at the time, I hadn't seen anyone else doing it. So original idea: do not steal or <laughs> do steal. I'm I'm not stealing though. <laughs> yeah. Um. So, but that said, uh, the Icarus is not your first bell song, right? Because I have the Ski Bones, which I'm pretty sure predates that, and I I don't think this is the first one either, is it? So the Icarus, um, that would be in terms of like things that I've made as a business. That was actually the first concept. Oh. And then I started working on uh, rep stuff when I um, found a way to be manufacturing those parts. Um, and so that was really easy for me to then, uh, and as I was learning 3D modeling and CAD, 
that was a good stepping stone while I was refining the Icarus. Um, was so, this the sandwich Icarus before? This was the stand. Yes. Yep. The sandwich Icarus. Uh, that was, yeah, the very first drop ever. And I'm forgetting when that was. That might have been 2022. Uh, sometime around that area. Um, but yeah. I hate it. It was like three years ago. And like, oh, God, 2021 is three years ago. I don't like that fact. Lock at it out. All. <laughs> yeah. Um, so you said you start with the sandwich Icarus. Um, I remember first hearing about, it, I believe through blade bias. That's how a lot of people hear about things. <laughs> um, I guess what can what, what made you think of this design? I know that, um, you have these angled handles. Not everyone loves them. I actually really like the, I think it's very intentional and has like a kind of bold design to it that I'm a big fan of. Yeah. Um, so what sparked this idea that you wanted to come up with? this fucking long ass ballast on with <laughs> with, with angled handles and this yep. sort of kukri yeah it's um it kind of all started it was a very long process so i'll pre- preface this by just saying that it took probably a year and a half to go from the thought of making a ballast song to actually having something that i would consider be to be production worthy so this is a really long process it took a very long time sure um and the initial idea i was really new to the community um and i was just like laying in bed and it was the summer it was really hot out i couldn't go to sleep and i remember kind of sitting there uh just thinking about bow songs and and i just had the idea for a bow song that had winged handle ends and i thought well that's kind of cool i'll I'll explore that. Um, so I made some sketches and I talked to um, my really, really good buddy, Trevor. Shout out to him. I was talking with him and we had just uh, actually designed a custom mechanical keyboard case and then hmm. built, I built one and then we sold a few. And so I talked to him and we had just gone through this process of, uh, I guess, making a thing from scratch. And I asked him if he'd be willing to help me you know, kind of make some concepts for this. And that ended up, (laughs) I feel a little bit bad for him because it ended up taking about a year and I kept Uh, like learning CAD and I was like, Hey, can you help me with this? And he was really, really patient with me and um, just taught me a ton. Uh, And his dad actually machined the first. Oh shit. Icarus drop handles. So shout out to Blackwell engineering um, and Matt. Uh, So they were just a huge help. And, um, they helped shape uh, mostly Trevor. He's he was really instrumental in the design. Um, where I had you know the idea for these wings, but he helped narrow down uh, how curved should those bottom corners be, and uh, how big should the cutouts and chamfers be, and what should the holes in the handles look like, and what should the blade look like. So I had a lot of these ideas that just needed refining, and we kind of worked together to settle on a design that I'm really happy with. Um, and a lot of people, I totally understand like angled handle ends. If you're doing, um, I think they're like crucifixes or I don't like know, a crucifix. vertical palm fan. I basically like, oh, where yeah, the handle yeah, sits the in your palm. Pirouettes, I think is yeah, what they're called. Yeah, there you go. I, so, I can't do that. but um, Those are tough. But if you're doing those, it'll kind of dig in your hand. That's one of the tricks that I would not recommend trying with this knife. No. Uh, um, yeah this is actually i think probably my favorite aluminum or like yeah my favorite aluminum line blade probably wow um, thank you yeah and i i like it it's got a lot of character to it i do wish there was some jimping because i do like ladders but all in yeah. all like this shit is fucking crazy and unique and <laughs> i like that it kind of stands out there are a lot of bow songs that i flip that i just yeah. go like it, it's fine you know it's good it's 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 perfectly fine i just don't it doesn't stand out yeah. To me. yeah but like this this definitely is something that like stands out in a collection um yeah which i think is really cool were you uh, a flipper before a maker i assume yeah i had joined in the community um like i said i'm 19 so when i was like 14 oh um i'm a young i'm a young guy <laughs> uh but when i was like 14 i joined and then pretty quickly gave up because I hadn't discovered the community or um, like Big Flips was kind of instrumental to me actually joining the community because all of his tutorials 
were so easy to follow and I could learn how to do cool stuff. Praise be to Big Flips because legitimately yep. carrying the, the community <laughs> on its shoulders in terms of oh, getting yeah. most people started. Yeah, he, man, he's just like, he's the backbone and for a lot of people of <laughs> their, the their flipping skills. Yeah. So I started off, yes, as a flipper. And I, I left like ballast songs or I stopped flipping them about twice. And then I basically discovered the the overall community okay. uh, and makers of ballast songs. Like JK was uh, kind of one of the guys who seeing his stuff got me really interested. Um, and from then on, you know, I went to make the Icarus and learned how to flip better and that sort of thing. So. All right. So you started out with your friend Trevor and his dad who made this, uh, the first drop of the sandwich Icarus. Uh, what happened next after the first sandwich Icarus drop? Yeah. So I'll, I'll touch on the first drop a little bit because oh, yeah, go for it. it's, uh, it's a bit of a complicated story. It started off the first drop for the Icarus is a pre-order. Um, and I had never, I had never made a full battle song before at this point, it was rep parts and, I don't think I had done any blades yet. I think it was okay. literally just rep liners, a couple spacers, and then maybe some scales. So this was my first time doing a, not only a full battle song, but even blades in general. All right. And so, uh, and also channel aluminum. I had never done that. So there were a lot well, of this, things that... This was before the channel aluminum one? Is this still a sandwich? Um... So this is... It's actually interesting. The sandwich came because we went to machine channel aluminum. and. I actually was inexperienced enough that I didn't know which tolerances were important. Um, namely, on that inside channel, those two faces really need to be uh, parallel to each other, very, very close yeah. to parallel. And I didn't really know that. So we, we machined, uh, I think, like 30 of these handles. And those little prongs near the pivot are perfectly parallel. So Up here? I get, yep, right about there. So they, oh boy. they were... Oh. Uh, they were causing issues, and I go to assemble all these knives, and it does not work. They, they're starting to bind. So Ooh, I kind dear. of, I panicked, and it actually ended up being that I had to uh, do sandwich style because that's much easier to have those two faces be parallel. Um, sure. Just do the house flat machined. Slabs. Yep, flat slabs. Um, so we switched to that, um, and it was definitely a bummer, but. Um, we got, I got the knives out and Matt was actually like, this is a testament to how great of a guy he is. He offered who's Matt to, this is the Blackwell engineering. This is the guy who machined stuff, all Your my handles, friend's dad? my friend's dad. He all offered right. to fix all the handles for me. We figured out a solution. He did it for free. Um, what a, and that wow. was the second, the Icarus you're holding, um, is the original handles with that slot widened out. Um, and all fixed. So, all right. like, huge shout-out to Are there other renditions him. of the Icarus after this? So, that would be... Um, that's the second drop. There are two drops. Um, and you can tell uh, the drops from each other. You have the sandwich. That um, was the set of Icarus builds that have the splatter anodizations. Yeah, so you've got I love this. Blue and red. So, so cool. I had a guy who uh, was just great at anodizing. Um, and unfortunately for this drop, he, he no longer does anodizing. So I just went with solid colors. Damn, because um, aluminum anodization is a pain in the butt. Oh, uh, yeah. So it's, getting this on aluminum is like, oh, that's so cool. It's so nice. He was so good. So I'm sad that for now he's not doing anodizing. But um, So that was the second drop. Um, and then I'm working on, I actually have third drop that will come soon. That's all three blade shapes, solid colors. Um, and so that, that'll kind of help differentiate. So I know that there's this kukri, there is a cleaver. What's the third blade shape? So the third blade shape, uh, it's a little bit hard to describe, but it's similar to that build where it's got kind of that recurve bottom edge, but it's straight back. So the whole top edge is just, hmm. uh, basically a straight line and it does drip dip in a little bit. Uh, okay. But it's based off of, uh, it's called the Biter Blade Shape, and it's based off of a sword from the Lord hmm. of the Rings uh, okay. that was then shown, uh, whatever whoever made the props for The Hobbit. Um, oh, Weta Workshop. Yep, so Weta 
went through and designed that particular blade and brought it to life. And the design that they chose, um, I took inspiration from. And so that's the third. <laughs> I'll have to ask you to send me these pictures so I can edit it in. And get that oh, yeah. Can see. Um, <laughs> yeah, for sure. So I uh, is the third uh, drop going to have any changes like jimping? Because I also know that this, uh, as much as I adore this, this is, uh -huh. I wish this channel is like, literally a millimeter or two higher because i yep. have like one flap there yep yeah so some changes will be um a bigger channel so the channel size will um kind of allow uh i guess tolerances to wear down for longer before you would need to tune it to get rid of tap um this actually has really really good tolerances too yeah those those came out really really tight um and then yes, that end channel that you were showing that has been elongated, so none of the none of the blades will have any sort of slapping issues, which great. is great. Um, and yeah, three different blade shapes, and there will be, um, I think, I guess it's six different color options because they're stone washed and all right, uh, bead blasted. You should but add jimping. I would like to add jimping. I think hey. if I do, um, I think there's jimping on the titanium Icarus. So what? maybe wait, what the fuck is the titanium Icarus? Hold up, what the fuck? <laughs> so that's uh, yeah, I guess and I've talked about it a tiny bit. There's I'll definitely do a tie Icarus, and um, it'll have oh three different God. uh, unique blade shapes. Um, the modified standard is very similar to that one, it's a little bit uh, more aggressive, I guess. Huh. Um, so everything about that is really fun, um, and I think I'll have to go check check my files but i also like jumping a lot um, okay so i might i might put on some some jumping for for that build for you Shit. i want to try is the, is the does this exist yet or is this a work in progress this is a work in progress it's okay it's pretty much it's ready for prototyping um i was focusing on a different design um that i think i'm actually going to do after the tie Icarus. so i'll probably get a prototype for the are you allowed to say i mean it's obviously up to you but like do you want to tease what that new design is or keeping yeah, it under wraps? Yeah, I've teased now? it oh. a little bit. It's, okay. so it's the anomaly. Um, anomaly. It'll be a sort of sandwich tie. Um, what do you mean by sort of sandwich? It's a, it's got, I'll just, I'll just say it's got some carbon fiber components that are oh, inside it that aren't exactly, uh, they're not inlays really. But um, I haven't seen anybody else do this exact method of, um, I'll call them inlays before. So sure. it's, uh, you know, it's in my style. It's very, um, I guess, organic looking, so to speak. Um, I so, am yeah. very excited. Because um, you also, I, you said it's called the Anomaly. I know that you have yep. the Anomalous Liners, which... Yeah sound amazing <laughs> holy shit i borrowed valley blade maids uh and i know that you also have a, a nice tanto um yeah. for uh, a japanese style tanto for reps yeah. um i guess do you want to get into like the order because i know there's the artemis but there's also the ski bones and there's some rep <laughs> stuff like, i don't know yeah. i guess this is all relatively within three years that's not that much time to be doing a yeah. good couple of projects but not too many that you spread yourself way too thin like a certain someone i know yeah you know i like to i like to say that um when you are learning a skill the first time you do something it can take a long time the second sure. time you do it it's half the time and then the third time typically it's a quarter that as you get better at, at doing something the amount of time it takes tends to decrease so for a lot of these designs sometimes it'll be like midnight and i'll just <laughs> be listening to music and 3d modeling and then a, a, a design idea will kind of come to me and i'll crank out something in five or ten minutes and then work on it later okay. and other times you know like the icarus or the anomaly um, it'll take months for the icarus it was years for the anomaly a couple months of uh, iterating and coming up with new stuff um, so there's a lot that goes on behind the scenes i've got uh, like five designs total and three of them are i haven't really talked about a ton um so it's it's actually a matter of um not doing too much because there can yes. you can just flood people with all these different options and it's just too much and then you end up kind of uh hung out 
to dry. It's um, too much also for the, like, as a maker, you're spreading yourself thin trying to juggle all these projects. And as a buyer, you, I mean, you're kind of diluting the hype around yeah. any given project. Um, so, um, I guess, uh, cause there's a Thai Icarus on the way. And how is that different from the Artemis, which is a titanium, it's, I assume skeletal, like how the ski bones is. Yeah. Yeah. So the Artemis is basically the, the ski bones predates the Artemis. I yes. really, really love the bare bones, but, um, the stainless steel bare bones is it just doesn't hold up with modern flipping standards uh, and the way the hobbit the hobby has has progressed the hobbit, the hobbit. <laughs> i'm still so thinking of the lord of the rings yeah, yeah. That's good um, shit, though. <laughs> but the way that the hobby has progressed it doesn't hold up as quite as well and it, i th- yeah. still think it's awesome i still think it looks great but yeah, i did want to do some rehandles so um the reason the artemis exists is i kind of got tired of having to search around for a long time for a uh, bare bones and then steal the blade put bushings in it build you know hand make oh, this handles is for it bare bones this is pre bushings bare bones oh, so no. it was it was a it was a process um, that sounds like fucking the worst because you had to buy <laughs> ski bones and then you just had a bunch oh no so you had to buy bare bones steel yeah. bare bones which you wanted to do rehandles because the steel is really heavy you then yeah. made bushings and then you just have a bunch of steel washers only <laughs> handles yeah i have i think somewhere around seven to ten sets just sitting in a box oh so, no dude you know ultimately it's like the the bare bones was i could get them usually for like 200 bucks about so it made it worth it to and it was just really fun to do anyway so if i didn't if i didn't make a profit i still enjoyed making them That's but fair. it did get to the point where i just i just wanted to make my own blades and i wanted to yeah make a design that i could control a little bit more easily sure i got really tired of reaming holes in hardened steel so Uh. it was really nice to to get to switch and take a handle design that i'm really happy with um and get to put a blade blade design that i also so came up is the artemis just this design or is it different it's a little bit different um if you squeeze those handles together the outer edges kind of flex and bend you can touch the handles to each other there's not really much support there so i kind of shrank that whole pattern and actually increased the handle width a tiny bit okay um, which i could not do due to spacing on that blade really um so being able to control the pivot geometry um was really helpful that i could widen out those pushing holes and then thicken up those handles so that there's less flex and then you got a little bit of a better sound, typically. Um, I actually love how this sounds, too. It's just yeah. very unique that it's like... It's skeletal titanium. It's like 3.1 <laughs> ounces. Something it's crazy. It's so light. Yeah, yeah I those, adore this, though. Those were... They're just fun to flip. They're not... Um, they're nothing crazy. It can be easy for really light knives to be hard to flip, but I always, I always enjoy yeah. uh, flipping those. Um, and so and the I Artemis tries aluminum. to hold them I think mine has aluminum spacers too, which I know that some of your ski bones have different spacers configuration. I think some are Thai, but yeah. mine's Aleph. Yeah, that might be, that's either the first or second ski bones I made, maybe the third, because only one of them has aluminum spacers. So Yeah, and that's you've, mine. So you've got the one of a kind, <laughs> all Hell played yeah. aluminum spacers. Um, and I, I just, I'm also really happy because I have blocks to do an anode job. Uh, that oh, I, yeah. I think is really cool. Yeah, that's um, nice. originally it was just silver. The Artemis is similar to the Ski Bones, but yeah. a few tweaks, mm-hmm. and also with its own plate. How is the Titanium Icarus different from the Artemis? Yeah, so the Artemis, uh, it started off as me trying to do more stuff by hand. Um, a lot of what I do is just 3D modeling, design, and CAD work, which gotcha. is... It's fun. Don't get me wrong. I love it. Um, but I did want, like, I think part of knife making that, uh, a part of knife making that's interesting is doing it by hand and grinding out blades or rounding handles or, you know, getting a bit more hands on than sitting at a computer and, and figuring stuff out. Not that that's a so bad thing. Do, are you, do you do any of the machining or is that still all just 
uh, Matt or someone else. Um, so yeah, I'll outsource my machining either to Matt or for like a lot of the ski bones or for rep handles, I'll get it water jet uh, cut by a local guy or sometimes laser cut by send cut send. So if you want to make oh. rep liners, they're, they're my go-to. All right. Um, but yeah, so it, it varies in, um, for some like fixed blades, I've, I've cut it all out by hand on just a bandsaw and then right. gone to the grinder and, you know, ground off material that way. But I the Artemis one, one of your fixed blades, actually, it's really nice. Oh yeah. Yeah. They're, they're fun. I had, I had a lot of fun making them. Um, but yeah, for, to answer your question, the Artemis was more handmade originally and the Thai okay. Icarus is heavier. It's obviously bigger. The Artemis is uh, on the smaller end. The Icarus is on the larger end. Um, I assume the Artemis is similar in size to the ski bones, but that's correct. Yep. Yeah. So I- Icarus is fucking long. <laughs> it's me and Machine Wise both uh, really like long, long knives apparently. Because yeah. well, now they've uh, they've started to pivot away from that. Yeah, I saw um, their their two new designs, uh, yeah, Sasori and Totori. Totori. That's it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so maybe I need to be, I've got, got a couple other designs that are a bit shorter. The anomaly is a little bit shorter, but it's got a gigantic long blade that almost reaches to the bottom of the handles. So holy shit. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's a bit, uh, don't want to make it too embellished. Um, considering yeah, so. how much I, I honestly legitimately really adore these, like part of why I, I, I ask guests to come on if I have their knives i like mm-hmm. their work and i can actually contact them because some people just <laughs> don't respond to their messages oh, and some yeah. people yeah. like i it depends also <laughs> like um there's a couple of reasons but like i legitimately really enjoy these and so knowing about this tie i've never tried the artemis but if it's not too different from the ski bones i think it's yeah fine. um but i'm very now i'm like excited about this Titan, <laughs> or, or sorry Thai icarus um yeah. and tie and and uh the anomaly which I don't know exactly what exactly that is, but I'm very excited about the concept, at least. Yeah, and ultimately, I love to hear that. That's I, I make battle songs because I love making knives and I love battle songs. Um, but it's a big part of it is it's it's also really rewarding to get to make something that somebody will really enjoy and um, whatever aspect of it they do enjoy, whether you like the design or you like how it flips. Like both. that's great. If you like both, that's great. Um, but I never want to make a product that somebody gets to it and they just hate it because that would suck. So I try to make the best bow songs that I can. Um, and I try to make them as cool as I can. Yeah. Um, and I, the way I kind of design uh, my bow songs is more around, I would say the looks than the performance. Um, I know like machine wise, values performance a ton squid values performance a ton so performance comes first balance comes first and so i'm a little bit maybe more towards looks come first um so i have flipped ballast songs that are looks come first like the soar mm -hmm. rainstorm one thousand (laughs) percent is a looks come first valley it is very odd and i have gotten used to it and i don't regret having it but most people are like Aww. and i was so excited <laughs> so so excited to try it and i still like yeah. it but it's very odd and uh it is actually really incredible that like uh, this looks really fucking cool and it flips really well and Thank i remember you. you were saying that you you want to make something that people like and enjoy and if someone hates it that obviously feels bad but uh a sort of like a pseudo counter like i'm a i'm a composer so i am also someone who works in the creative field mm-hmm. and i think what's really cool is that you want to make something that's for you something that you think is cool and something that you think because if you try to make something that appeals to everyone it kind of appeals to no one yeah um, for sure that, that's why there are just some honestly forgettable battle songs uh yeah. but if you make something that you think has something that appeals to you and in this case the looks and it still manages to perform which it does um not everyone's gonna like this not everyone likes these uh angled uh ends which you know that is what it is but i think it's cool and i don't have i have like a like it's mostly these two and like maybe one more um i can't even remember to be honest uh and i have (laughs) one on the way like blocks has one called the tundra that has um some pointy ends um yeah but like 
I feel like those who have flipped the Icarus are really wow. And also, like, some of them don't even realize it's aluminum. I'm like, yes. <laughs> um, but um, that's just kind of, like, my thought is, like, this is so different and unique compared to the rest of my collection. I have so many here on my desk, <laughs> let alone on my wall behind me. But, yeah, I mean, it's a lifer. It, it's not replaceable because there's nothing else like it. Yeah, yeah, and you made a great point that um, I think most makers can totally relate to that, that you make a design that you really like and that Mm -hmm. you're proud of and that you enjoy. Um, And, you know, ideally, you can give it to somebody and they could hate how it flips or they could hate how it looks, but they could still appreciate the quality or they could still appreciate, you know, the thought that went into it. Um, But yeah, ultimately, yeah, a big part of, making battle songs is it's it's a hobby it's part of what i do for a business but it's a hobby yeah. and by definition that's something that i do because i enjoy it um so is uh your knife business like a part-time thing because you're do you go to school do you have a day job like yeah I'm so curious. for a while it was a part-time while i was going to school um i did running start in high school so i got my associates when i graduated high school Jesus um, Christ. Yeah, so lots of lots of stuff happening fast. Um and then for the the year after high school, um it was yeah, focusing a lot more on the business. Um and then uh yeah, just growing that. So um I have the skills mm-hmm. now that I'll probably continue to do it part time. Um knife making or Yeah, knife making. Um and, and we'll see. It it's it's kind of up in the air. Uh, I would love to do it full time, but you never know. So it's really hard. And uh, as a freelance creative, I have lately been very angry at the <laughs> uh, corporations and politicians, considering everything is so goddamn expensive. Yeah, food is expensive, oh, rent is yeah. expensive, gas is expensive. Everything, everything, everything is more and more and more and more expensive. And I'm not gonna get on such a fucking political tirade right now but like <laughs> the, to to get to the point back to this is that being a independent creative as a full-time job is really fucking hard to do yeah i am financially some people are like are you rich i'm like no i'm just sad and divorced which is why i bought all <laughs> these knives with money that i was saving for i'm not like legally divorced but it's like money i was saving for a wedding that i was just like you know what uh so uh but it's <laughs> yeah, it's hard to, it's really hard to make money and it's so hard uh, not, yeah yeah so a lot of knife makers uh people don't realize they're only doing it on the side or yeah. those who are doing it like full time like people complain about squid industries being expensive but also it is a company with yeah. several employees who all need to be paid and have health insurance and taxes and all that stuff like sure obviously you could say the price to the quality of things like you know but like anyone that's trying to say that it's like theft or it's like it's it's uh raw like it's a ripoff like it's not it's just everything's expensive yeah hard yeah, everybody's got to feed their family somehow right you got to keep the lights on and yep. if you have really expensive ones usually the most expensive ones are from china or made <laughs> by a chinese company new i believe is chinese um uh, Nibelis at least does like a great job making original unique designs that um, yeah. do a great job but they are also I think Chinese I'm pretty sure um, and I don't know just shit is expensive so yeah. um, if you are doing this part time on, on the bright side I guess you don't have to live and die by your your margins of the battle songs but on the other hand I, I know that obviously those who are working full time on battle signs get to be able to do more, make more. I don't think you have made a. Have you made a batch of anything recently? Because I, I think I've seen you post about like uh, fixed blades. I, I think you said something about making a, a kitchen knife for your mom. Um, yeah, yeah. But... It's been it's been a little bit. Um, most of what I've been working on, yeah, is this Icarus drop. Um, there's been a lot of behind the scenes stuff with. Um, like my payment processor for my site, I've had to change who does that. Um, and just fun fact for any listeners uh, is that uh, knives of any kind, no matter where you are, will always be classified as a high risk 
um, investment, I guess is a good way to put it. That's so yeah, that's been a fiasco I've been going through for the past probably two months. Um, and before that was, um, my anodizing shop. I had to get a new shop for, or work with a new shop for this batch of Icarus, uh, builds. And I got all my parts back and this whole drop, almost this whole drop is going to end up being blemishes because that shop turns out was not, was not particularly good. So oh, there's, there's a lot of stuff. Where, shame. Yep. It's kind of a shame. It's definitely tough, but ultimately, like you said, I don't, I don't live and live or die by, by my, um, by my margins. And I do this because I love to do it. And yeah, I definitely do want margins. I don't want to be uh, going oh, bankrupt yeah, no. from, <laughs> from Balasans. <sighs> Making but, anything yeah. and losing money on it sucks. And sometimes oh, yeah. there are just unexpected, um, as you said, you know, you know the the person who did these anos, it's so it, like learning that they no longer are doing <laughs> aluminum anos is so heartbreaking because this is so good. And that the people that you went to next being, you know, you had to take a gamble. You've never worked with them before. Yeah. And unfortunately, um, you know, if they didn't deliver, which is a real shame. Um, and so now you have to mark things down for blemishes because yeah, uh, unless you can't mark things down, I don't know, but no, they're all marked down for, <laughs> For everybody watching, they are marked down. And when I do the drop, there will this is your chance to get get one for a discount. So you can keep an eye out for that. Yeah, but it is it is still a bummer. Um, and it's not even in your hands too. Yeah, it's there's ultimately there's nothing you can do about it. There's a lot of things in life where you, if you can just worry about it, it'll it'll make you feel worse. So there's kind of nothing I can do, and I'll just yeah. keep on making knives and ultimately hope to find an anodizing shop that's really great. And so I'll keep looking for that. It's reliable. Yeah. 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 And uh, I know someone who, so, some people have made really inexpensive things to like compete, but I also am like really adamant about not racing to the bottom, uh, yeah, especially as a creative. Sure. Um, because especially also if you're trying to make things as cheap as possible so that you can be like competitive in the market um, and you're competing that way, if things do go wrong and things do go wrong, uh, it's going to be so much more costly and whatever yeah. money you do make might not even break even. So like, uh, shit, battle songs are expensive and they need to be. And if they weren't, we wouldn't have them. <laughs> yeah. And I think a, a big shift is, um, you see a few years ago, I feel like the battle song community was just on such a rise. There's new stuff coming out all the time. And I think right now we're in kind of a low spot. Uh, there's less new um, creators. Instagram is, you know, kind of yeah, choking out all the content butt. creators. Yeah. It definitely feels like a rut. Um, but the difference is before you have a lot of people who are willing to spend the extra dollar to support the small maker, even yeah. if there's a, you know, technically another option that is a uh, more affordable or, you know, lower price. Um, and that now everybody, you know, Everybody is pinching pennies. I think it's everybody is saving because everything, like you said, is so expensive. It's because companies just raise the price of groceries and gas, yeah. even though they don't have to. And then they have record breaking profits, even though it's not even affected by the pandemic or the war in Russia. It's just like that. I have so many opinions on things. and I wish there was some laws that controlled rent <laughs> here, but they aren't in Massachusetts. Well, and, and that's a great a example of. Feelings. You know, one thing changes completely unrelated to bell yeah. songs. You write, you know, groceries grow up. Everything is more expensive. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you have to figure out as a maker, as a creative, whatever industry you're in, because um, I think most most industries are affected right now. You have to figure out what you're going to do about that. Yeah. And some people, like you said, try to race to the bottom. Um, and it's totally a gamble. Um, and it can it can pay off. And sometimes you can... Uh, ruin your image and end up being you know worse worse for it uh, mm -hmm. and other people just make less don't lower prices they just pull back a little bit and yeah ultimately you can hope and pray that the future you know is better um and that our economy <laughs> picks back up and something changes uh, i'm ready i'm like uh, lately just lately i've just been like i'm so ready to to burn shit down but um <laughs> i guess again trying not to get super political on my yeah, gotcha. podcast um uh, <laughs> mostly just me at myself um but uh i yeah i think one thing you said about like how a few years ago it was just like it was really crazy and booming and i feel like 
Um, so I actually only joined very recently. Um, okay. Then like the last two years, I think. Gotcha. Um, February of 2022 nice. was when I joined. And so a lot of, I think what happened was during the pandemic, it just kind of ballooned like crazy. And so <laughs> yeah. I don't necessarily, I think people are kind of like lamenting who see all these people have left and like how like everything is really scary economically. Sure. Um, but honestly, I I feel like compared to pre pandemic, you know, there, there was the balance on community it was pretty niche and then yeah. it ballooned like crazy. And I think more, it's more not that it's like, Oh, everyone's leaving. I think it's just more that it's kind of, stabilizing like there are hmm. new people coming in but yeah. uh nece not necessarily like oh everyone's it's not like a fucking uh exodus um it's just that <laughs> right you know a lot of people got really into it you know it's like well, you know a lot of you know how many people picked up bread making <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's a great point actually yeah so like <laughs> i think you know to put it in perspective if you were honestly if you were to be able to see a line from like 2000 to 2024 it would you know you'd have this crazy spike and honestly it's probably just leveling out that's hmm. probably more at least that's my assumption and i do yeah. think that there's new people coming in every day and uh the it's the entry point is much cheaper now with um the vault and the extrusion um yeah and the canyon to an extent um and the orion 1.5 like holy shit yeah um it's just that a lot of people don't really have a ton of spending money which Despite ever seeing everyone going to Blade Show, and I'm like, how do you all <laughs> afford this? <laughs> oh yeah, let me just oh, yeah. spend uh, hundreds of dollars on on the flight and the lodging and the <laughs> ticket itself, the pass itself, and let me spend thousands of dollars on knives. I'm like, bitch, hello. <laughs> I wish it was me. <laughs> I I don't in the sense of like all that money could just yeah, go no towards kidding. buying more knives. Like, that's that's a good point. Well, and I, I like what you said. <laughs> I like what you said that compared to um, pre-pandemic Balasong community, now there's so much more. And I totally yeah. like thinking back to when I was joining. Um, the knife I started with was like a crappy DLC coated, not DLC powder coated, like CCC that was I think seven ounces, and I bought <laughs> it off Amazon, and that. <laughs> It was probably good for finger strength, I guess. But that <laughs> that was part of the reason why I didn't stick with the community because that it, that thing it so fucking heavy. <laughs> it's because it, was, it was hurting your hands. It was yeah, it was hurting my hands a little bit. Um, oh my god! And part of it again, less creators. I hadn't I didn't know who Big Flips was. I didn't know. Yeah. Um, Squid wasn't posting tutorials. Um. So there's and I'm really glad that they are because their tutorials are really well done. That's what. Oh I yeah. Yeah, they they've been such like love them or hate them currently. They have helped this community so much. They've yeah, they've sorry. totally changed it and um really taken it from a pretty niche uh, I yes. guess hobby to something that's very approachable for a lot of people um or at least helped in that I, I will say that while I, I know that some people don't like squid products or some people beef with them, kind of, yeah. um, I think, objectively speaking, uh, they have done so much for the community and the stability that they bring to the community and being able to bring new products. And they have pioneered so many things. And yeah. also just like if you've been around long enough, which I was not, but like Lucas is just like squid master something like 23 <laughs> or whatever. Like he yep. he's not some dude who came out of nowhere. He's fucking grassroots as as fuck. Yeah. And yeah, oh, yeah. like and. And people like, you know, there's so many people who have just been around like Jerry Hom I had on earlier. That guy has also just been around forever. <laughs> and so, like, I think it's just it's cool to have like a lot of like new makers. But there's also like a retention. And we've moved past Benchmade as like the fucking gold standard. Um, we are running kind of sort of long in a sense. But I just gotcha. have two questions for you left. Yeah. Um, one is, what would you say is a little known difficulty about your process of making battle songs? Yeah, I'd say what comes to mind initially was hollow grinds, like 3D modeling hollow grinds. That was kind of a puzzle that I had to solve. Hmm. Um, and I won't explain it because it would take forever, but <laughs> just use a sweep. Um, and Is that a cat thing? Yeah, it's a cat thing. Currently, the thing that's most challenging that I still do not, I am still figuring out, I don't fully understand, uh, are grinds where... The bottom edge, the sharp edge, I guess, 
um, does not follow the top edge of the grind. So if you look at a grind, it's kind of like an even shape, maybe, where that top end where it gets at its thickest uh, follows that bottom edge, you know, exactly. They're, I guess, parallel to each other in that way. Mm. Uh, but there are some grinds where the top edge just goes straight in one direction and the bottom edge curves all around, but the top edge is consistent and does not follow it at all. And it's kind of hard conceptually like to explain. Um, but that's very difficult to 3D model, but actually not crazy hard to do by hand when you're grinding a knife. So you see that okay. in a lot of folders and fixed blades. But for gotcha. me, that is that is an extreme difficulty. It's so tough. But there's so many knives that just look fantastic that, that utilize that. Do you have that. any examples? Because now I'm really curious. Um, let's look see. For. Horizon Blade Works or... Uh, forget you can send me a picture and i I'll will post send you a picture on I'll, it'll be right here <laughs> yep he's the he's the one um whatever gets put up there he's the one who comes to mind he's i think like 17 or 18 and he's making handmade wow. knives handmade folders that are so unbelievably what beautiful like he's who comes to mind um as you know just that concept uh, and the other difficulty a, is a naming. Mess when I was that age. Sorry. <laughs> the other difficulty is what? Oh, the other difficulty is naming stuff. Really? Uh, I try to have my names be memorable, uh, relevant to the design, and not crazy hard to spell. And that's there's enough parameters that it cuts out a lot of oh, sorry, potential. Ru- fell off. There's enough what? Oh, there's that's enough. Uh, I don't know parameters to make naming difficulty. Uh, more yeah. difficult um because there's more overlap than there should be yeah there's there's a lot of stuff that get that get cut out uh, or a lot of possible names that get cut out when you start narrowing it down like that and so i have like five designs they each have three blade shapes so okay. every blade, blade shape needs a name so there's 15 names right there and then each design needs a name so that's 20 names just I, you know, for my wow. production knives alone, and then you've got reblades and stuff. So, I think that's that's, that's, that's a little odd. known difficulty. Um, hmm. Just when you're dealing with all of the naming, like it's it's fun to name one thing or do a community yeah. vote, but it's tough. <laughs> what what drives me insane? So there's there's like two tridents. There's the EOS trident. There's the Nabali's trident. Yeah. Uh, there's a there's a few other uh, battle signs that have like some duplicate. But what drives me crazy is that there's the Corvus that's designed by Sharp Flippy Boys and is being manufactured by LDY. Uh-huh. And then there's the LDY Corvus, which what? is completely different. <laughs> yeah, that one's that one is aluminum. Uh, it looks really cool. I want to try it. And I have tried the Sharp Flippy Boy Corvus, which is titanium, has a really cool, like, kind of claw looking blade. Yeah. Uh, you can oh see that goodness. on my channel if you want. Yeah. I and haven't I'm just even like, realized those the- are different. <laughs> yeah, they're different. And I'm what? just like, oh my fucking god that's confusing uh, oh, uh also um verdict uh recently hr or one, one of the chinese makers i think it's hr uh uh-huh. has teased uh a new battle song called the verdict and the verdict is also there's another battle song by m i i i k or m3 k but yeah naming is hard um i guess the last question i have for you is is there anything you want to tell our listeners? You've already teased the Thai Icarus. You've teased the Anomaly. Um, is there anything else that you would like to leave with our listeners or just some advice or whatever? Yeah, I'd say um, I'd leave a piece of advice for... I know there's a lot of people. I've talked to a lot of people, too, who are designing their first Bala song. Um, and uh, especially to the younger guys, because I went through that being a pretty young guy designing a ballad song or a young person in general. Uh, and when you're young, you think you're really smart and then you grow up and realize that actually I don't know that much. Um, so my advice <laughs> is like, if you're designing your first ballad song, be willing for it to take a really long time. Um, yeah. Be willing to put in a lot of effort and to keep improving it. Um, and don't go at it alone. It's so helpful to have somebody who can point out, all the things you could change that you were totally blind to. Mm -hmm. Um, And that's one of the biggest values of designing the Icarus with my good buddy, Trevor is he pointed out a bunch of flaws, like so many flaws that I thought the design was perfect. And he came in and he was like, actually, (laughs) nah, you should change this. You should change that. 
And at the time, it was kind of like, obviously, I got a little bit offended. But, Oof. you know, oh, ultimately, <laughs> in the end, it made the design better. And so looking back on it, it's totally worth it. And I'm yeah. really glad that I spent the time uh, refining it and, and coming up with, with a good product. So if you're if you're designing a battle song right now, uh, be willing to take hard criticisms for the sake of making a great design. And yeah. just put the time in. Put your ego aside, take feedback, uh, and and don't go at it alone. And one thing I really love is that everyone I've interviewed so far is really friendly and open to open to talking and open to like <laughs> yeah. sharing everything. Yeah. Um if you're a maker, there are so many other makers that you can reach out to. If you don't have anyone local to you, because I don't have actually no, that's a lie, I do. <laughs> um <laughs> Uh, eventually I'll have a 51 on, but he has been asked to, uh, delay eventually. So I guess he's been ready. Um, but I will say, uh, thank you so much static, uh, or yeah. Kaden, uh, for coming on. And with that, uh, thank you everyone for tuning into this episode of Battle Song Meet the Makers, uh, like, and subscribe for more, click the bell and, uh, static or Caden, where can our listeners find you and your wares? Where can people buy your stuff? Uh, you can find me on Instagram at Static Knives. Uh, I also have a website, Static Knives at Shopify.com, I think is the, the URL. That's in my Instagram bio, so you can find that there. Uh, and yeah, I, that's that's all I'm on. Great. I will include those in the description of this <laughs> video. And with that, see you next time. Happy flipping, everyone. Take care. <laughs>